today we are revisiting our rabbit tractor and uh, discussing a few things that we've found out or discovered or rediscovered I suppose about uh, tractoring rabbits. So it's been a few weeks, maybe a month, it's been a little while since we've uh, really talked about the rabbits so I figured this was a good time for a discussion on uh, rabbits and since it's still fairly nice out we're still in August and we're still using uh, our tractors to uh, sort of help with the diets of our rabbits or help with their feed cost we figured we'd come back and talk a little bit about the design and just some things we've sort of discovered. So first off for those who uh, maybe haven't seen this yet here's the tractor it's a fairly large model it's uh, almost eight feet long by I forget exactly how wide it is but uh, it's a pretty good size now we have actually raised out and uh, processed one litter in this and this is now a second litter that we've uh, got out here and we definitely have noticed a few things that we really love about the design and a few things that uh, needed some tweaking or didn't necessarily work as well as we were hoping and it's not all to do with the design so one thing we really love about the design is uh, the no bottom because with the younger rabbits it works really really well for us at least if you've got flat ground which a lot of our area around the house is fairly flat because they don't dig uh, until they're a little older now as you can see behind the big caveat with that and I think we touched on this when we did the uh, the building of this was you do need the box on the end to give them a, a, a spot to uh, to hide from predators and the principal predator at least for us is going to be raccoons uh, most of the other predators foxes and that kind of thing they might come and take a look but they really can't get at them without a lot of effort but of course raccoons can reach through and uh, well that can go badly so that's a very important feature but otherwise we really like the basically no bottom for these sort of grow outs. We kind of showed this in our last video on kind of just how much do rabbits consume. You can kind of see here where they've been sitting and this is not the luscious part of the lawn but as you see over here the grass is quite a bit taller quite a bit thicker than it is where they've sort of been sitting. Now we've had them in this area which is one of the downsides to the tractor because recently we had some pretty hot weather and so even though this does have quite a bit of shade uh, we basically needed to get them somewhere that they had a little bit of extra shade from a large tree and so they've kind of been working this area but we have been working them through here you can see the opening where they've basically eaten everything down so really that's I guess the uh, the plus and the negative because the negative to this is what we're finding at least with the champagne d'argents is the pasture access is definitely not enough. On the, on the uh, litter that we've already processed we, we did keep weights and uh, to be honest we were a little bit disappointed with the weights. They kind of averaged at about two pounds dressed basically so that was just bringing the, uh, the edible portion into the house which isn't terrible but uh, the smallest was 1.71 pounds so quite small. So that's definitely something to consider. Uh, what we kind of are finding with this is it gives these grow outs more space and they're constantly being moved to new ground which does keep them fairly clean. Gives them a little bit of enrichment for lack of a better way to put it because A, they're still together as a litter but uh, it gives them some things to do. Even if they constantly have new, uh, new ground and new uh, forage to sort of eat off of. But at least with this breed we are finding they can't be done on pasture alone. Now we certainly could select for better pasture uh, growth but we also live in Canada so you're going to get a stumbling block and we found this even with rabbits that uh, we grow in the hutches. When you feed them the weeds and everything all summer long and then you switch them to the diet in the winter that doesn't have that stuff as much it can cause some issues so it's in my, mind, in my opinion, it's very hard in a climate like us where we can't pasture them sort of most of the year to really select better pasture genetics, for lack of a better way to put it. Others may argue with that, but that's my opinion on the matter. So I will show you the solution here, which was a very, very simple one. We basically retrofitted the tractor with a hopper on the inside. 
so that A, it stays out of the elements and uh, we can kind of make sure they don't really run out of uh, pellets at any given point. So a very, very, very simple solution to uh, the problem. And what we're finding so far with this litter, you can see from that one right there, I forget the exact age of these uh, bunnies, but generally speaking, this litter seems to be doing better with that. Now I've just moved these fairly recently, so it doesn't look like they're grazing as well as you would like them to. And we do find, if given the opportunity, <laughs> they'll pick the pellets over the forage, but uh, they still do consume the forage. So one thing on this video, as I sort of mentioned on that litter that we sort of did the first trial with, they didn't grow to as big of size as we had hoped. And I don't want to make it sound like we didn't feed them pellets. They were not grass-fed only. But what we did was about every three days, we gave them, I forget exactly what the, the quantity was, but it was, it was uh, sufficient for the number of rabbits in there. So every three days we were giving them sort of a normal helping of, of pellets just to uh, make sure they are getting some of the trace elements and that sort of thing that the pellets do have that uh, the pastures and whatnot may not. Now, I will say too, I think the, like any grazing animal, the kind of pasture you have and the, the species you have in it definitely would affect the growth rate. I, am, I have no doubt that a very heavy legume, i.e. clover, that sort of thing, uh, forage would probably really agree with the rabbits. But it is interesting because we did a bit of a, a little bit of research into some of the ingredients of some rabbit pellets and uh, to be honest it's been a while since I've really looked into it. Uh, I was quite surprised to see things like soy featuring fairly uh, sort of highly in the ingredients list so certainly uh, probably one of the reasons given the higher protein content and the fact that it's still also a legume that those pellets are uh, able to produce such sort of big fatty rabbits, <laughs> for lack of a better way to put it. So it's definitely lots to think about. Now, I guess the big thing for me is this is a bit of a compromise. So we like the tractor, and it definitely works to reduce the feed cost. They enjoy the access to the forage. But it's a bit of a compromise for us, at least, to uh, sort of give them access to that and try to give them some semblance of some, I guess, natural foraging behavior. Uh, I know that's not necessarily important to everybody, but uh, I think the, the big thing we're struggling with, and we have talked about this before, is even in this tractor system, rabbits, although they are an amazing livestock, when you really uh, look at it, they're the one livestock that in the vast majority of small farms or homestead type farms are basically still farmed in a very intensive uh, industrialized manner, i.e closed confinement and uh, you know completely dependent on outside food sources through pellets and all of, the, all of that sort of thing and the system works really really well but uh, it's a hard thing to grapple with when you uh, are trying to do things a little bit more extensively or at least well I guess with rabbits there, there, there's a hard thing there too but you're trying to work within sort of some of their natural behaviors and whatnot so this we do definitely feel is a step up from that, but we're definitely not there uh, as far as the ultimate way to raise rabbits. But from a grow-out perspective, this tractor design seems to be working quite well with a few tweaks and a few minor considerations. So what we really kind of keep finding time and time again with the rabbits is sort of the two biggest factors, there's all these other factors, but two of the biggest factors for growing them out seem to be space and food. Uh, food's probably the easy one because, as we've shown a couple times now, it's amazing how much a rabbit eats. Now, compared to something like a sheep or a cow or a larger grazer, they're eating very little. But for the animal of their size, they do eat a lot. So I think the hard part is, although you can give them alternative diets, such as access to pasture, the reason why the pellet is so attractive is because, for lack of a better way to put it, it has actually been scientifically formulated. Basically, when you take the rabbit completely out of its any semblance of its natural environment, I know there's an argument to be made there that domestic rabbits don't have a quote-unquote natural environment because they've been domesticated for so long, for so many generations. But, for argument's sake, when you take the rabbit out of its natural environment, 
you have to compensate for all those things. It's it's really interesting. Uh, I was listening to a radio documentary about uh, humans and how when you do the same thing to us, you have all these things you have to compensate for. So the pellet does that for for better or for worse. But when you try to deviate from the pellet, it takes a lot of tinkering, for lack of a better way to put it, research and uh, selection because you are still going to select rabbits uh, for your management style that do well in the way you manage. But the space is always kind of a more controversial topic, I suppose, because it's been quite formulated what the bare minimum sort of square footage area required for rabbits at different parts in their life cycle. Which again, as I was talking about with the uh, sort of more industrialized nature, this sounds an awful lot like uh, the square footage requirements that you can find for chickens and all the other things that have been quite industrialized. So although they won't die, <laughs> and in some cases they do quite well in, in those uh, scenarios, um, i.e. they continue to grow, there, there is that question of, uh, is it really the most ethical way to raise them? And I don't know if our tractors are a more ethical way to raise them. They definitely come with their own challenges, but uh, it's definitely uh, started our minds thinking on uh, sort of ways to improve our rabbit raising endeavor. Overall, as we watch these really content rabbits here, I still believe that the uh, the tractor is a success and uh, definitely would recommend this design to others. It's self-supporting, fairly lightweight, but robust enough to uh, basically the bigger predators aren't getting in without a lot of effort. And uh, they do seem relatively happy with the design, so we are planning to uh, construct a few more of these, so stay tuned in the future because we will uh, talk about this again and maybe do some more comparisons between uh, some of the future litters as we go here.